Thank you. Thank you for inviting me here and listening to your applaudissements already. But um, um, okay, yes, my name is uh, Laurence Madrel, and my studio I started um, in uh, 1987 is um, tw 28 years ago. Is indeed near Bastille, in Le Marais. It's called LM Communique and Associate, the play open word. LM very much, and I love cities as well. Um, what you see here is um, that's where I live. Uh, that's where I live 12 hours a day, in Rue Elsevier. Not bad for a graphic designer, hey? So um, this is the whole story of the um, uh, street there. And um, I live, I mean, the studio is at the seven, but there is a little, um, little, little um, gallery. And the gallery is called Six Elsevier. And that's, we use the typeface. And it's installed itself in the As Helvetica font. <laughs> Um, uh, boutique who was just there. It was very funny. It was so Elsevier is, Cis Elsevier is a gallery. Go there, there's a great um, right now uh, exhibition of a Korean. Anyway, um, so uh, you know all Elsevier and I'm not going to t talk about it more. So this is where we are in this studio. Every single <coughs> Uh, seasons of the year, and um, I have an Anglo-Saxon um, education, if I can call it education, in England and in America, in the U.S. in Providence, Rhode Island. And I start I, when I came back and wanted to uh, work for subjects and not for making objects. This is something that. Um, interest me is all the subjects that Jeff just said is um, the public just to design for what we are on an everyday life a citizen and um, also a city dweller so we are as much um, I'm as much concerned uh, with what I design to what I put out in the world so in 1980, we were very involved in the fight against AIDS. And um, the men between us with the Ask Me for the uh, Agency of Fight Against AIDS, with a play of with this typeface, with the two M's for the homosexual uh, community. Uh, we designed also, I just go fast with what the past is, with the domain of um, Chambord, and it's still this identity is still there with Sabon right there. And um, in 2000, I worked for the uh, uh, sorry, not hysteria, historical um, monuments uh, for uh, since 1993 to um, 2006, and it was taken over by Rudy Bohr afterwards. And um, a beautiful time spent with them. And the same year, we were uh, starting to do a big project for the, um, what is called Paris Rive Gauche, which is our, um, it's one of a kind project about this big territory that was um, from the Gare, the station of Sterlitz, to the outskirts of the peripheric. So right now, uh, what we've done uh, lately, which is the Compiègne Memorial, which is a hostage camp during the war. Right now we are working and doing the signing for the Museum of Mankind, and, um, which is the Le Musée de l'Homme, uh, Place du Trocadéro, and it's in work in progress. We just finished the, um, <coughs> uh, the signing for the, um, the um, library in Strasbourg with the architect Anma. And we are still um, working with the archaeologists for the last 10 years. It's a new institution that um, 
um, this institution is dealing with the archives of the ground. So from um, visual identity to aching kind of publication and films. So big, um, big images for also how to explain a city to um, the citizen of Toulouse here, a new a street that is the Osmanian street within the city. So this is projects that last for a long time. Uh, when the city, the, uh, the street there was built for a couple of uh, years. We work, I don't know if you see that, we've been working and designing for La Défense. When La Défense, um, this is a drawing I had made by um, an architect, Luc Guinguet, who just drew how was uh, La Défense um, with very tiny over there, like a pear shape, and just went all the way to the Seine. It was, the project was called from the Seine to the Seine. This is one just, I'm taking you to territories and to cities. Um, I guess La Défense and these new um, big territories around Paris cities and what they call um, national of um, operation of a national interest, l'opération d'intérêt national, qui uh, will become also um, département des établissements publics d'aménagement, which is uh, they are uh, de public developers, and this uh, we designed for one what is called Orly Rangis en Amont, which you see it's Paris. Uh, just uh, the outskirt of Ivry and going down. And this um, image was the tool to link all the cities together so they could recognize themselves. And that was a great tool for them. We're working also for a campus of the north of Paris called the Campus Condorcet, which is in Aubervilliers. And this map was uh, designed and drawn to the north. Usually the architects in urbanists, they put the north in the north and we just like turned it around to just um, make understand all the, the, the um, research people, uh, all the intellectual who like are and the professors who are in the Luxembourg, in the Latin Quarter and suddenly they're going to become and come in this area, in this new campus that's going to be built and open in 2020, 18 maybe. And um, so this map had a, a real function. Say how close the campus is to uh, the Latin Quarter, where they are. They don't want to come, you know. The, who wants to leave the Latin Quarter and come into Aubervilliers? So it's a um, communication tool. And then now, just um, right now, we're working for Paris Saclay, this, uh, which is the other campus, which is uh, south of Paris, it's a huge scientific campus. And why this drawing? Because we just started working with them. And we are making a abécédaire of the biodiversity. And still with Luc Guinguet, we're starting to draw. Um, and I guess we're doing to do a publication. So this, just like the range of work we do, which is, um, of course, very diverse within this very heavy operation. So we have some pleasure of publication of films in this very uh, tough time. So what I wanted to uh, say that also very important for us, of course our projects are very contextual. Everything is made of, uh, from right down the history and the geography of 
where these cities are. And I'm talking to you about two cities where we did project for, and one is Yverdon-les-Bains, and the competition was from signage to uh, urban scenography. We were called in, and we were five of us competing, and we won this competition. And it's in um, south of uh, Lac de Neuchâtel in Switzerland, and the little town of 20,000 people who really sort of um, start to be like a dormitory because uh, between Geneva, Lausanne, and the, like every city, the industries are leaving the city. So what do we do for signing in this city? So we walk the city, that's something that we do. We walk the city, we read about the city, we talk to people, and the brief was extremely well done. Imagine having a brief in France like this, never. <laughs> so, la signalétique en ville d'Hiverdon-les-Bains. Plus, somebody was hearing Eduardo checking who worked with me, went alone to this brief, and he came back and he said, they're very nostalgic about that cloud of uh, dealer and Scofido, they're very... And um, also, uh, Rudy Bor, who just launched the competition with the Swiss um, city, said, you're not going to do, to design a family of objects. You're not going to, you know, it's not a family of objects that they need for this signing system. So, indeed, we went and um, again and again, and um, we saw some signing, Swiss signing, and you see that to, the mission was to get the people into Yverdon from the highway, from the station, the train station. So, of course, we go and look and take pictures like we all do. And then suddenly you see the centre professionnel, le centre thermal, le centre de psychiatrie, le centre funéraire. Et, et donc, euh, oui, c'est rien, cette quincaillerie, euh, c'est something that really is not very welcoming. <laughs> so, and then they have a really lovely symbol, this little Y, with the, with the water. And then suddenly, leaving the city, we said, okay, that's a strategy. They've got waters, trees, and technology. Why technology? We'll see later. But this is a project that's a few years ago. And, but I, I show it to you because it's the essence of how we'd love to work all the time. And water, it's got the lake, the canals, the, the baths, the spa, the fountains. And they've got trees, and they've got a project, an urban project. They've got a, they want to have a label, a green city, and planted avenues. And they, as it is a dormitory city, they started the Y Park, which is a sort of the technology park and an engineer school, very well designed. So we go back three times, walk the canals, walk everything, walk, take a car, and then suddenly we say, we don't see the water. We don't see the water. So, so we go to the museum and you just like go and, and see these beautiful little drawings. And um, suddenly you realize that these canals do exist in the history of uh, the city. And then they give us these maps. And they say, what do you do with a map? You know, it's an orphan map. You don't have... It's just like plugged in, just like, just falls down like this. So, of course, we, we add a few grounds around it. And you understand that you have to come to the highway into the city. The city, this little orange, um, the, the old city center. And then this is the highway, and this is the train station that parts part of the city. Uh, from the lake, you know, station. I've got something with train station and network. 
So and suddenly we sort of start sort of saying that these canals do exist, of course they're a little exaggerated there, but, um, and we come home to Paris and we start putting a tracing paper over the map and then suddenly you see 30 bridges, fantastic. We have 30 bridges to work with. And maybe this is what the city is all about. We can make um, bridges and fantastic bridges. And then this, this grid could sort of also be a way of finding your way from the station to the thermal bath to the spa. You turn right and second bridge and left the fourth and here you go. And then um, we sort of dreamt about 10 actions for 30 bridges. The appeal of, to appeal to the five senses. You can mark the, the franchissement, you can have little noise maybe or something to just over the bridge. You can have a uh, at every um, every canals, you can have a railing, a different one, to give it its identity. And uh, thank you, on René Knip on the left. And um, just have this little Y we saw, and just mark the bridge. And then you can name the bridges and identify your canal that you're crossing. And then you can use it to mark the uh, information to what you find on, on your way by the canal. And then also you can tell them to get rid of the cars and, uh, and maybe uh, put your garbage somewhere else and, in the, uh, and deep in the ground or somewhere. But, and then you can add some lights and then you can start to have some, plant some nice um, smells, flowers, and, and also listening to the little music of the water. So it could be some poetic moments, and you can name them. So we had fun. It took us a day to do all these drawings with Didier Guillain, who is the, also an architect who did this. And we had fun and saying, OK, let's do it. And also, the trees could be a sensible, sensitive way of uh, reaffirm the, the presence of uh, the, the, the landscape. And also, trees can, you know, you, you've got to hide also. You've got to frame the landscape. And on your way to the city, you can hide to for a better view. And the trees, if they're not planted, they can guide you to the heart of the city. And if you don't have, you can't plant a tree, you can have these little totem poles with a Y. And you go all the way to the city, to the inside of, of the um, perimeter of the old city center. And there's the place of Arm, which is that's where the soldier used to exercise, but it's become a parking lot. So maybe you can put it in the frame of the bridges as well and welcome people to the station. And then you can have a tourist office right there, just like the big grid. We, we, we went crazy. So it's a competition after all, you know? And then you can have a something because the, the city is parted from um, by the railway station just to, you know, when you arrive, you don't know there is um, a lake there. So maybe you can have a back rear, immense back rear of your mirror. And then this is all obviously not ours, but it's just references to what it could have fun. And also a few years ago, we said we could have also to get rid of all the signs, you know, use these um, technology. Now you, we all have it. And um, also we could do some work on the maps. It's all different, so all this profusion of 
brochures, we can mutualize, mutualize, mutualize the energies and have a pocket um, guide, a, a guide of Yverdon, a program of what's happening and, and, um, and also have everything in your iPhone and you can have a paper version of it, a mobile version of it, an internet version of it, the why guide because you ask the question and you can have, you know, interactivity and how to do it, a webmaster, and then you could be in Yverdon and looking at everything, choosing what you want to see in the language you want to see, whether you are in the city dwellers or not, or a passerby or want to know about the history, do some signing or I any languages you want, without um, forgetting the wonderful old um, signs that are part of the city and part of the system. So, voila, we won the team. I had the black hair then. Um, and this is a... <laughs> and um, do I have some times? I've got another project where the character is... Um, the um, a character, a character, a character, and a character. A character, uh, a type um, face can be, has the first role in a city, maybe. Okay, I'm going to tell you about uh, a city which is near Paris and um, near Paris, south of Paris, is Twin Sceau. Maybe you know Sceau. Maybe you know the whole story of Sceau. <laughs> Maybe you uh, live in Sceau, tell me, because I'm going to talk about so. <laughs> um, okay, so here is so little town, very quiet, just pedestrian street, has a beautiful um, castle and park. And um, Colbert is the one who, you know, 17th century just uh, built this. And the city is really so so, you know, just sometimes, you know, 70s going on. And there's market like everywhere. And there's a fantastic, um, the mo one of the most prestigious. Um, Qui a été là? Who went there? <laughs> uh, the prestigious La Canal, who. Um, um, Lycée? College? And then there's a train station in Robinson. And then you see sometimes the city is not, uh, you know, very banal also. So um, why this city? Because at some point we worked on it. The mission was to have the citizen, the, s the city dwellers, I mean the people, who, the inhabitants, to understand that their city had a history and a specific street that is 2,532 um, meters is very important to their city and they could listen to what the authority, the mayor, and um, could uh, change the city for the best in some of a building project. And so we went to, d we did some research. Of course, I never work alone. I work with historian and um, uh, who write I work also on this project with Jean-Pierre Grunfeld, who is, uh, did the strategy. And um, the strategy was to um, tell the story of this uh, 
street and which is on a ridge of a hill. And as you can see, it's 100 meters high and there's a valley there. And through history, this street has always been there since Colbert time because this street was made for uh, taken, uh, that's where the cattle was brought from the Normandy to be sold here, Le Marché, and, and there were slaughterhouses there too, and also <laughs> some uh, vegetarians in the room, and, um, <laughs> and, um, and also the um, they had the, you know, they've got the, I don't know, skin made there. There was le bièvre, la bièvre, there was water and everything. But also what was very important, that this uh, ridge is also so the cattle could uh, have dry feet uh, because, you know, there was water right there. So they would arrive fresh to the market. So an important date is 1884 where you see, which is really funny, this little train going up the hill. And it was articulated. And it just like arrived in the middle of uh, so. And they used to, they had some uh, horse carriages taking them to uh, Le Plessis Piquet, which was Robinson afterwards. And uh, this is a great history of uh, les fameuses guinguettes. but the street is still there. And then suddenly the train arrives in um, 1903 and you see it and it comes to uh, Robinson. So that's what we work for all the time. So to reveal the city and to just like understand, make it understand the ball. And, and suddenly at some point also in 1903, you see this crossroad. This is very important at some point because in 1937-41, this was the Vichy time and there was, you know, not elected mayor, but uh, mayor, and just like suddenly destroyed the whole city center. Nothing. And then in 1970, you see that uh, school Place de Général de Gaulle, you know, a famous man, and uh, it's just like it's an empty space. That's uh, what the city... So this is what's at stake in this, um, in this project, is to make understand people, to understand that before there was, um, there was a, um, a city that was connected together, dense, and then suddenly this big hall has to be reconnected with its own center. And that's what we had to explain. So how did we do this? So we represent what we call the lifeline. And <coughs> the lifeline of this suddenly has several names. La Rue Houdon, the Place du Général de Gaulle, Avenue du Président Franklin Roosevelt, and it goes from one point to the other, I just showed you. And then suddenly there is innerving of streets and suddenly we start sort of giving names and also uh, grapes of words, uh, clusters of words that just like start to tell you about the city. And only this is um, all the words that you see are going to be, we're talking about this particular point, uh, are going to be only of built, um, something that has to do with built, um, um, and something has to do with the life of, uh, and um, built places. The market, the embarcadère, the and for instance, so comes from this really lovely name. It's um, sell, so, so. Uh, what it is, it's cultivated everywhere in the village. So it was a vineyard there. 
So suddenly, you can imagine that you put it in a city and that from one point to another, at random, in that, uh, well, not at random, very specific places, because we only invade the, um, the urban furniture or what's in uh, the, that street where we can go. We have six polarities, and we start to sort of tell the story of the city in every, just like say that this is an ephemeral, it's not lasting, it's just going to be 18 months um, on the street. Also, you can paint the uh, barricade, the um, fence, just telling you that just behind it there's a street. Also, you can um, do projection on empty walls, just tell the market, and also arrive at the balcony, 102 meters, it's the highest point. And you can sing also to Rire à Robinson. So all these signs that are just like now uh, posters as well, where in these six points with the typeface Stanley that tells you the story of each point we wanted to show. So, voila, and this is the famous Roudon, and merci. <laughs>